Okay. Okay. As I mentioned before, <clears throat> we didn't plan that way. That would be similar, uh, our similar discourse and study, but I think that will be blessing to us all to consider this. And this is subject, Holy Spirit, God, God's disposition. And <clears throat> we will begin with Matthew <clears throat> chapter 3, verse 16. And we will use Behemoth, Behemoth translation. And Jesus was baptized and immediately went up from the water. At that moment, the hev heavens opened and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and a lightning upon him. The Bible describes the Holy Spirit first as God's power and second as God's disposition, mind, heart, and will in himself, in our Lord Jesus, and next in his true and loyal followers. In John chapter three, verse 44, 44 and this is, quote from New King James. For he whom God has sent speaks the word of God, for God does not give the spirit by measure. In Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1 we read from English Standard Version. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. I'm sorry, <laughs> we, 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 we lost that. Okay, I will read again. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. Jesus was the first to symbolize his consecration to, the, to his father, father's will, even unto death in his baptism in Jordan River and was anointed with the Holy Spirit with holy influence, disposition, and power, and was as, and as Saint Paul states in Hebrews chapter one, verse nine, and <clears throat> I quote from New King James, therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of glad gladness more than your companions. And this is quotations from Psalm 45, seven. That moment marked the time of our Lord's spirit begetting and entering the narrow way and receiving spirit of wisdom and understanding of, a, of the heavenly spiritual things as he has expressed in the symbolic language of our opening ter the verse, the heavens were open. Isaiah foretold this in, in chapter 11, verse two, modern King James version. And the spirit of Jehovah shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom, and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of Jehovah. Yes, the Bible shows that no matter how wise, how gifted or educated one may be, if he is not spiritually minded, cannot receive spiritual things because they 
uh, they are of the higher order. In Psalm 25, verse 14, we read, the secret of Jehovah, yes, with them that fear him. The natural man, unbegotten man, cannot perceive or reason out the spiritual things. And Saint Paul explain why. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 and 16. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Nicodemus may serve as good example of the natural man. In John 3.3, 3, English World Bible, quote, Jesus answered him, most certainly I tell you, uh, no, uh, the one who is born anew can't see, who is not born uh, can, uh, can, anew, can see the kingdom of God. Born again from above, anew, Greek genao, born begotten. The begotten of the spirit have the mind of Christ, can see, can understand the spiritual things which the natural man cannot. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. To be begotten of the spirit, it means to have God's disposition or inclination of mind, heart and will in the consecrated God's people. So the ingredients of the Holy Spirit, spirit are evident as the following three things. First, spiritual cap uh, capacities implanted or fixed in the, saint, in the saint's mental organs by the act of spirit begetting. John 14, verse 26. Good News Bible. The Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom, or Diaglot says, which the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and make you remember all that I have told you. So the begetting of the Spirit imparts imparts power and desires to perceive and reason on spiritual things until they are fully learned and understood as our Lord stated in John chapter 16, verse 13 and 14. When the, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide, guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Ephesians chapter five, chapter three, verse, verse five, which, no, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets 
by the spirit. Second ingredient is the new veil, the new spiritual veil that veils God's will. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, New King James Version. For it is God, God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. And in the third sense of the word, spirit is the spirit of holiness. Romans chapter 1, verse 4. English Standard Version, and was declared to be the Son of God in power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. The new creature gets not only the qualities and endowments which come with the anointing, but is gradually strengthened, balanced, and crystallized in them, as Saint, as Saint Paul stated in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. This ingredients of the Holy Spirit also mentioned in, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 and shows that God has not given us the Holy Spirit disposition of fear, but a wise, strong, and loving disposition. In question 39, we read, Brother Russell stated this, these precious promises of the divine nature of glory and immortality are the begetting power that enters into our hearts and that the Lord uses through the, his Holy Spirit to work in us to will and to do his good pleasure. End of quote. So this begetting power must have been entering into the mental organs at the time of spirit begetting, which always follow on the true consecration, whether before or after water baptism. John chapter 10, uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 44. Sometimes Bible uses the term Holy Spirit as the new creature to designate several things. The be beginning of the new nature in the church is the start of spiritual capacity and desires implanted in brain organs, enabling other graces to reach beyond the earthly purposes to which they before the begetting of the spirit were limited. These things make spiritual capacities and graces to act from spiritual mot motives and in a spiritual manner toward earthly or heavenly purposes as the case may require. See reprints 22.10. The presence of these spiritual capacities, desires, and graces, sometimes biblical, biblically called begetting, sometimes creation. And as a result, the thing so created or begotten is sometimes biblically called new creature, King James Version. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, 
all things have become new. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 15, we read, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but a new creation, King James Version, new King James Version, a new creature, King James Version. The, old, the other descriptions are that which is begotten, that which is begotten, the new man, the inward man, the inner man, and the inner man of the heart. The apostle John in his first letter uses this word begotten six times, see American Standard Version, because King James sometimes has born. Now, we may have preference in using these terms. Some of us may prefer to be called a new man instead of the new creature. In that case, let us ask ourselves, how do we get to this point to be called by one of these names? By replacing our own will with the will of God and by the spirit begetting such consecrated child of God will become a new creation, new man. Yes, these biblical descriptions are synonymous, as we will see from the following scriptures. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24, New King James. And that you put on a new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10, we read, and have put on a new man who is renew, renew, renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Ephesians chapter 3, 16, he that would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the might through his spirit in the inner man. Here, the new man, new man is described as created in the past, is the new creature by the act of begetting of the Holy Spirit. Again, in the past tense of the verb indicate, verb indicate that the begetting of the spirit is, refer, is, is referred to, which gives to all reasoning organs the qualifications and desires accordingly as the mind or heart is involved, as the passages just quoted show. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 25, we read, if we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. This shows that living in the spirit precedes walking in the spirit. Evidently, the Christian began to live in the spirit at the time of the spirit begetting. Walking signifies progress in the consecration and gradual development of that which was created in us. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, we read, for we are his workmanship, 
created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Created in Christ Jesus, as this verse, verse show, were made new creatures, spirit, spirit begotten for good works. And James chapter one, verse 18 says, he of his own will has begotten us with the word of truth that we should be the first fruits of his creatures. And first Peter chapter one, verse 23, English standard version, having been begotten again, not of corruptible seeds, seed, but of incorruptible through the word of God, which liveth and abided. The inner man. As a result of accepting God's will as our own and as a positive outcome of our consecration, these spiritual capacities and desires in our mental organs and attain gra graces contain the spiritual will to will God's will in our earth in our earthly and heavenly relations. In the second sense, in which the Bible uses the term Holy Spirit is a new creature, is the will to will God's will is given as of the Holy Spirit as new creature. John 7, 17, New King James Version. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. In Romans chapter two, chapter 12, verse two, we read, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove why is that, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And there is good reference to First um, Peter chapter four, verse two. While the words mind and heart have various biblical meanings in comparisons and in contrast, the Bible uses the mind to mean the intellect through which we perceive, remember, and reason. And the heart means the affections. It is, it is its con contents, its in, and inclinations. Matthew chapter 6, 21. For where your heart, your treasure is, there your heart will be also. But when the heart and the will are contrasted or compared, especially in connection with the mind, then the heart stands for sensibility and the will for a strength. So we are instructed in Proverbs chapter four, verse 23, and I will quote from English World Bible, from World English Bible. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it is the wellspring of life. The term Holy Spirit, God's disposition in the saints, as the new creature, 
Biblically, it means any one of the spiritual affections and graces or any combination at their various stages of development until their completion. The Holy Spirit in the saints. When examining ourselves, we may not feel comfortable to call to be called saint. But this word saints describe those who receive this special grace and were justified and sanctified through faith in Jesus. Romans chapter five verses one and two. Because of that, the Apostle Paul in his letters addresses such justified brethren as saints, for example, Romans chapter 1, verse 7. To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 12, giving thanks to the Father who who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Other, others of the various terms applied to this class considered under this subject are Christ in you, Christ in us, Christ in me, Jesus, Christ in you. And when Jesus is the speaker, you in me, I in you, and I in them. As we study at chapter, as, uh, John chapter 17 and verse 23, and I will read from New King James Version. In them, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. And verses 21, 22, and 24 are very good. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Romans chapter 8, verse 10. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because, because of sin, but the spirit is is life because of righteousness. And good um, parallel scripture is Colossians chapter one, verse 27. Galatians chapter two, verse, verse 20, we read, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The church begotten to the divine nature. Now, some of the proofs that the Bible Without, without using the ex exact expression, does prove that the church was begotten to the divine nature. First Peter 1, 3, and 4, New King James Version. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has Beget, begotten us to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to 
an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Yes, these things belong to the divine nature, as St. Peter refers to them by the expression incorruptible. And Strong 862, as negative particle and derivative from 5351, and decaying in essence or in continuance incorruptible, immortal. The begetting of the church is unto inheritance reserved in heaven and attainable not after death, but after resurrection. Yes, we can see that Saint Peter clearly shows that the true Christians, the followers of Jesus, are begotten unto divine nature. The begetting consists of creating a new spiritual qualification and the new spiritual will in the consecrated ones. And these just created things are the first two parts of the new creature, the beginning of the Holy Spirit in the consecrated followers of Jesus. So the Holy Spirit in these two ingredients begins the divine nature. And when its third ingredients character likeness of God's and of Christ, in the saints is developed, polished, and completed, such saint will be ready to receive the completion of the divine nature in the first resurrection. Saint Paul de <coughs> describing the new body, which will be a part of the church inheritance reserved in heaven. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse one and two, English standard version. For we know that if, if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made, with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put, our, put on our heavenly dwelling. In volume six, page 673 we read, the apostle is writing to the new crea creation respecting their condition not including the natural man, he recognizes the new will as the new creature and the old body as the ta its tabernacle or tent, which is much better than none, though quite unsatisfactory. More light is given on these two of St. Peter's expressions, incorruptible and undefiled, in reference to the change of the human nature to divine. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 53 and 54, English Standard Version. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the, perish when the perishable puts on the imperishable, 
and the mortal puts on immort immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, that is swallowed up in victory. This indicates indicate that the spiritual will powers and desires are set in the brain organs to the intent that by fulfilling set of of set up of conditions we may attain in this life to the to a crystallized character disposition of mind heart and will in likeness of God's and Christ's character and in the resurrection will put on immortality. As to attaining of such, of such heart and mind and body, Apostle Paul shows that it was his intent to lay hold on Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14, New King James. Not that I have already attained, or I am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus had also laid hold on me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have uh, apprehended, but one thing I do, forget, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press forward for the goal, for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, New King James, upward call, King James, high calling. Yes, this marvelous, marvelous chorus of the high calling is repeated so often throughout the, the whole New Testament, so that not only as quoted as quoted 1 Peter 1, 3 to 5, and the general setting of the New Testament alone give us these proofs. This is also proven by the first promise of the Sarah covenant. And I think brother, brother, um, Sam mentioned this, but this is Genesis chapter 22, verse 17. Indeed, I will greatly bless you. I will greatly multiply you, your seed, as the stars of heaven, of the heavens. Yes, this is that spiritual heavenly seed. In Galatians chapter 3, 29, New King James Version. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seeds and heirs according to the promise. Galatians 4, 31. So then, brethren, we are not children of the, of the bondswoman, slave, but of the free. St. Paul was discussing in, this, in the preceding verses of this chapter, the two mothers, Hagar and Sarah, representing typically two, the two covenants, Hagar, the law covenant, and Sarah, the original outbound covenant. So the gospel church, is not the seed or product of two mothers or two covenants, but of one, of the free. That is the Sarah covenant. 
so is the high calling still going on? Yes. And how long will continue? We can see from the scripture and from the time features that the high calling continues on. Jesus in Matthew chapter 28, <clears throat> verse 20 said, teaching them to observe all things which I have enjoined upon you. And behold, I am with you all the days till the consummation of the age. This quotation was from the Yaglot rendering. These words of our Lord have great meaning. The church will be here until consummation of the gospel age. When the church will be completed, then we should, then should follow the resurrection of the ancient saints and inauguration of the new covenant restitution represented in the type of Keturah. See if 100, <clears throat> 106 and reprints 51, 78. Yes, there is only one calling in the gospel age. Ephesians chapter four and five, King James, New King James Version. There is one body and one spirit, just as also you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. The prophet Isaiah in chapter 61, verse 1, foretold this one baptism. The spirit of the Lord Jehovah is upon me because Jehovah has had anointed me to preach, preach the, the good tidings unto the meek. The anointed here is Christ head and body. This promise God partly fulfills in Jesus, Luke chapter four, verse 18, and partly in the church by creating Christ-like character in this life and rest of it will be fulfilled in the first resurrection when this character will be clothed, clothed on with the divine nature. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 we read, for as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that body being many are one body, so also is Christ. In Ephesians 2.10 shows that we were created unto good works. So the creation must have occurred before the good works were developed. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared for a hand that we should walk in them. That which was created in Christ Jesus in this verse, we, for we are his work, workmanship, the new creatures. And because spiritual capacities, desires and graces and will to do God's will are created by the act of begetting, these things created in us that we may perform good works. Ephesians chapter four, verse 21 to 24, New King James. If in, indeed you have 
heard him and have been taught by him as the truth yes in Jesus in Jesus that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and uh, renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to the, to God in true righteousness and holiness. When was the old man put up? Verse 22. In the time of consecration, when in when in an end the laying down of our human will we gave up all that we had and hope to have in the and to be as human beings romans chapter 4 6 verse 4 so is it it should be our effort to the very end of our life until bringing every thought unto captivity to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. By the expression, be renewed, etc., St. Paul defines the new man as that which was renewed at the time of consecration. This, of course, does not mean that the new materials are imparted to, to these brain's organs, sometimes something like new software into our computers but new capacities, cravings, and desires to the intent, to the intellect, and to the heart, the qualities, the qualities in proportion as we study and live by the instructions of the word of God, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. It means God's disposition, God's influence. And since God is love, his spirit must have part in all the qualities which would make attribute of love as Apostle Paul writes in Galatians chapter five, verse 22. And I will quote from English standard version. But the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit, the product of the new will and the new spiritual affections, he continues, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. These powers and functions of the Holy Spirit are demonstrated in in earlier quoted Isaiah um, 11 verse 2. And again, let us revisit Colossians chapter 3 verse 9 and 10, English Standard Version. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here we note that the past putty of the old self, old man, with deeds and the putting and the new man, new self, are given 
as admonition that we should not lie to one another. Also, we see a sharp contrast between the old self, old man, and the new self. What is the old man? It is the old human nature. And see uh, more on that subject, volume six, pages um, 599 to 603. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 16. Even though our outward man nature is perishing, yet the inward man, American Standard Version, inner, inner na na nature, uh, nature, revised version, is being renewed day by day. Romans 6, 6, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse 21, 22. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. The spirit is given as guarantee, pledge, down payment of the future blessing that God had promised to his faithful after resurrection. Second Corinthians 5. Chapter five, four and five verses. May the Lord continue to bless our endeavors in following his examples and of obedience and faithfulness to his father. Amen.